Hello everyone, and welcome to Talking ELT, the easiest place to learn about the big issues in language teaching. Today we're continuing our conversation about artificial intelligence with Ben and Hayo. We'll be discussing the role of the teacher and looking at the way that artificial intelligence might impact areas like classroom management, learner feedback, and materials design. We've talked about curation, or we're still in the topic of curation. We've talked about the what, the system of the subject that we're teaching. The second component that we identified was deriving insights about individual learners and where they might fit in and what they might need in terms of the different building blocks at a given moment in time. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, another technology that has been around for some time now is suddenly being transformed, and that is learning analytics. Of course. Or educational data mining, yeah, mm. um, which has been around for probably close to 15 years now uh, in its current in its current mm. form. Mm. So we have a lot of insights into how we can how we can identify what groups of learners or individual learners uh, might need at a given moment in time, how they are performing, how they are performing in relation or in comparison to other learners, etc. And well, this is an area where. AI is really having a tremendous impact. And going back to what you said earlier, Ben, the use of natural language processing now allows, and it's now I've seen it already being incorporated into a number of learning management systems, allows teachers, you know, who have no technical skills in terms of, you know, uh, learning analytics, etc., to ask everyday questions about their learners yeah. in everyday language. So, for example, which of my students? is really you know struggling at the moment with topic x or how are my learners doing on average compared to ben's learners who's teaching the same subject his okay. are doing better okay maybe you and i yeah. need to sit down and maybe i can learn something from you yeah. right so that yeah. that is quite uh, exceptional yeah uh, to be able to do that yeah i agree that natural language processing interface is going to change it i think also you know we're at the moment we're at the stage where we're using uh, learning analytics to display data to give data to teachers um, and teachers don't have time you know so it's, no. it's kind of we're not at that useful stage yet no but we, but what we're working towards and we're talking about the, uh, me, the kind of medium future i think of as the automation of interventions mm. you know so um you don't even need to ask uh, you don't need to analyze the data to see who's falling behind it's already being identified. It's already been responded to. There's already an intervention on the way to those students who need help. Or at least an alerting, Yeah. right? At least okay. so the system, uh, there's an important caveat here, which I'll come to in a moment. But so the system can identify, for example, that if a certain threshold is crossed, let's say that more than 20% of your learners uh, achieve less than X percent on the online quizzes that you set for homework or something. Mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. system can automatically, you know, uh, send you a message saying, watch out, you know. There's something going wrong. There's something yeah. going on. So this automatization is yeah. extremely helpful, right? Because you don't, as a teacher, have to worry about that. Yeah. Of course, the caveat there is that, uh, and this is, I'm sure this will be a recurring theme throughout our discussion, who sets those thresholds? Who decides what that percentage should be? And who decides, for example, who should be alerted and in what way? And that's where the human in the loop, which is a, a term uh, that you're probably familiar with, which yeah. is AI processes, but with a human uh, augmentation, if you will, yeah. the other way around, um, will remain absolutely vital. Because, yeah. mm. of course, it could be the person who designs the software, it could be managers, it could be individual teachers. It could be decide. commercial software developers, it could yeah. be done for all sorts of purposes, yeah. uh, which are not primarily pedagogical. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, of course, is where we as teachers have a frontline uh, role to protect yeah. our learners and mm. to do what we are here for. Yeah. I think that is really important, an important point, um, which is worth stressing, is that teachers themselves will have a role in shaping the impact of AI, like mm -hmm. the, the way AI impact our lives, it it needs to be shaped by people who understand the pedagogy and understand the um the value and understand how to put it to best practice. I guess yeah. I think teachers do have quite a large role in that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, you see, you see systems which have kind of been developed by engineers 
uh, and you think, wow, that's that's probably not the best approach. Um, but it made sense from an engineering point of view. Mm-hmm. So I remember seeing, uh, it, and it's it, it's one of those things I'm always cautious about when people get very excited about personalized learning journeys. Because I, I remember seeing something, I think it was a Microsoft university or Microsoft um, supported university um, where th- there was a lot of work had gone into identifying strengths and weaknesses and guiding students through that it all made complete sense and then they showed the university of the future and it was banks of individual students with headphones on sitting in front of screens <laughs> oh, okay. because it was so individualized mm. they couldn't interact with other yeah. people and, yeah. and you think wow that's a dystopian vision of the future mm. um, so and and obviously with language it's even more so so i think the the there's always a social element to learning, particularly with language learning. Um, and so I think there's always this balance between personalized and social mm, learning, mm. Um, which every which a teacher will probably be the right person to manage that balance. Yeah, exactly. And, and I think what you're pointing at as well is the fact that, of course, engineered systems are designed to optimize efficiency not necessarily effectiveness and effectiveness is what we decide as a society including us as teachers and learners uh, is important right so it might be that you and i having a conversation in class is not the most efficient way for me to develop my pronunciation skills yeah but it does make me get to know you better it makes me feel part of of the classroom yeah and there are you know it's yeah. effective in that sense it yeah. may not be the most efficient way right yeah. but yeah. Th- that i think leads us on to if i may to the you know going back to our distinction between the different jobs different roles of a teacher perhaps that's a nice segue into the delivery side we've talked about the curation yeah. and the yeah. yes. preparation if you will but now we have uh, a corpus to deliver well, what is the role of AI in in that uh, phase of the instructional process? So there's a, the, uh, obviously with the creation of uh, activity. In some ways, the risk here is is that uh, AI can generate so many, so much activity, so many texts and activities um, that uh, it you kind of lose track of what you're you're trying to do. Um, but I think the exciting thing is is really that ability to create learning activities texts which relate to the interests and needs of particular learners where where they are so i I know that sounds like it's going against what i was saying about the caveats around personalized learning Mm. but i I think what you're going to find particularly is that there's a core of learning which is very social uh, and joined up and then there are elements which are customized to particular interests Um, as a publisher we we constantly face the problem of um creating international uh, textbooks where, with huge amounts of care going into making those work across a range of different learners. Mm. Um, but actually, we know each individual has their own interests, and it's quite difficult to, to meet those individual interests. It's, in the future, you can see it being much more much easier to meet those individual interests. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, because I guess there is a further distinction between materials creation or materials adoption or materials adaptation. Mm. And I think if we're leaving aside for a moment the materials, the teacher creating their own materials, but if we take the common scenario of a teacher working from a prescribed or selected textbook, for example, then, yeah, you do, as an individual teacher, have the challenge of making that work in your particular context and for each of the 20 or whatever different individuals in your group. And that's possibly where AI can come in quite handy because it allows you to, say, take a an activity or text and say, create for me 20 slight variations yeah. on this um, relevant to the individual needs of uh, our learners. And I think that's where, as a teacher, you would say, well, that that would be quite good because if I don't have to write 20 individual variations of this, yeah. this text, a sign lot of time. me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, it, you know, I'm also reminded of uh, the challenges of um, you're in a kind of university context. You've got some students, uh, just completely different subjects. And even when they get kind of clumped together as engineering, for example, someone who's in mechanics, Chemical engineering is completely different to mechanical engineering, mm. so you, it's very difficult to to ch- fine tune texts and activities to I- individual subject areas uh, in the current approach. But in an AI generated 
approach, I, I, I can see that being much easier. Yeah, and that is a real, <clears throat> real practical benefit, isn't it? Yeah. And then going back to the the uh, the topic of materials creation, uh, yes, on the one hand, there is this this wonderful uh, opportunity to have essentially endless. Uh, lists of materials, resources, activities, etc., created, and you know we see some really interesting uh, plugins and and apps, etc., appear that allow you to do that. Mm. But it does very, very closely link back to the earlier topic of curation, right? Of because quality over quantity, yeah. effectiveness perhaps over efficiency. You need to balance both, yeah. and I think that's where as a as a an AI ready <laughs> teacher, so to speak, that's where you have a very important role to play, right? Um, for yeah. example, at a, at a technical level, the way that la large language models uh, work, of course, is that uh, if they base themselves off uh, non factual uh, content, they will produce non factual content. In other words, yeah. there's this, this acronym uh, GIGO garbage in, garbage out. Right, it it yeah. can't yeah. do anything meaningful with uh, with the original database not containing meaningful content, mm. and I think this is where um, not 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 to take out the crystal ball too much, but this is where there is I think real opportunity for uh, for our field to develop um, contextualized, localized, and and even personalized AI. Uh, systems that um, maybe in some form of hybrid uh, allow for a, a school, an institution, um, uh, a university, or even an individual teacher to curate, collect a set of potentially very large, um, you know, large set of, of materials, mm -hmm. um, but curate it and then apply an AI interface to that to generate from that. Um, you know what you will know to be or most likely to be good quality uh, activities or or resources. Yeah, it's interesting also because this this uh, and it comes a little bit back to the corpus uh, conversation earlier. That you know we are talking about learning English to communicate with other people who probably don't speak English the first language either. So that's that's from the majority of people, that's the context in which they're learning English. Um, and and so trying to deculturalize a lot of the, 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 the language that uh, they're learning at the moment is, is quite difficult. But I can imagine language learning models, be, sorry, large language models being created, which are... Um, you know, are not UK biased, US biased, mm. but are, are really using language that is taking language, built on language, which is used between second language speakers of English. Yep. Yeah, that makes exactly. sense. And that, that, yeah. that is where, you know, you see, you know, we talked earlier about unanticipated yeah. Uh, opportunities. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked for decades now about English as a lingua franca and, you know, yeah. well, maybe this will allow the emergence of a, uh, well, it could be called a global dialect, yeah. uh, a, a global yeah. act. <laughs> we just coined a new term here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, Dictionaries right. here. Add it in. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go in there yeah, in the next yeah. one, right? Yeah. And, and that's that's where the real excitement comes in because it builds on the on the incredible capabilities of this conglomerate of of technologies called AI that we refer to as AI, but with a human in the loop. Yeah. And I think if you do put these two things together, there is some real magic to be uh, to be created. Thanks for listening to this episode of Talking ELT, the easiest place to learn about the big issues in language teaching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to learn more about this issue and others like it. If you want to learn more about emerging technology like AI, big data, and more, you can download our new position paper on the topic, written by Hayao. Just follow the link in the description. Thanks for listening.